Good evening and welcome to Poland Daily. I'm Konrad Gorlinski. First story for today is the election of the mayor of the city of Rzeszów in southeastern Poland. Uh, this is a first serious test of the popularity of political parties in Poland since the par parliamentary elections in 2019 and the COVID-19 epidemic. The next election is scheduled for the autumn of 2023 and politicians want to know what their popularity looks like now. That is why this local event has taken on a national significance. Polls are to be opened in a week's time on Sunday, June 13th. In the Ibris poll for Radio Z, when asked if the elections took place this Sunday, 47% of respondents supported the joint opposition candidate Konrad Fiołek. Eva Leinart, supported by Law and Justice, came in second with a score of 23.6%. Grzegorz Brown, the candidate of the Confederation, received less than 11 percentage points. And Marcin Vorho, supported by Solidarna Polska, the alliance of Jarosław Gowin and former Rzeszów president Tadeusz Ferenc, achieved a result of 10.5%. Over 8% of the respondents did not indicate a preference. Recently, Jarosław Kaczyński, the president of Law and Justice, gave his support to the current Podkarpacie province governor. Before that, Rzeszów was also visited by Prime Minister Mateusz Morawiecki. Compared to last week's poll carried out by the Rzeszów Courier, support for the peace candidate increased by over six percentage points. I would like to cordially greet the new candidate for the president of Rzeszów and ask the Civic Platform and PSL where they got this guy from. Straight from a prison cell? Because his culture of expression shows it. It's looking like a second round will actually take place. The question is, of course, who will be in it? Apart from Konrad Fiołek. Is Eva Leinart, as most polls show, or maybe Marcin Vorho, because such a poll also appears. Then the right will have a chance to consolidate again, certainly as part of a united right. The question is, what will the voters of the Confederation do, whether they will support the candidate of the united right or support the candidate of the opposition? Mr. Fiołek is the leader in these polls. It is difficult to indicate a reservoir of votes by which he could in improve his result in the second round. So the matter will have to be settled by an agreement on the right-wing side. Also on the table is the candidacy of the former Deputy Minister of Justice Marcin Vorho, who in some estimations also achieves over 20 to 30 percent results. He was supported by Tadeusz Ferenc, a former politician of the Democratic Left Alliance, who ruled Rzeszów undividedly since 2002. Confederation MP Grzegorz Brown also doesn't shrink from his rival, even though he was excluded from yesterday's debate organized by TVN24 due to his use of non-parliamentary language. A possible second round is planned for June 27th. Britain is experiencing a very significant increase in coronavirus infections. In May, slightly over 2,000 people were infected daily. Recently, that number grew to over 5,000. The dominant strain in England is the Indian variant of the coronavirus, which is much more contagious. However, hospitalization rates and mortality is significantly lower than with earlier strains. Perhaps this might be due to their massive vaccination program. Over 60 percent of Britons are vaccinated. In Poland, the number of infections is falling. In the last 24 hours, the Ministry of Health reported 312 infections and 13 deaths, while 260, 261,885 coronavirus vaccines were administered. About 37 percent of Poles are now fully vaccinated. And thousands of Hungarians went to the streets to protest plans to open a Chinese university campus in Budapest. Viktor Orban's government plans to finance the investment from a Chinese bank loan of $1.5 billion and $300 million of their own funds. Critics say that this sum of $1.8 billion is almost equal to the entire higher education budget of the country. According to liberal think tank Republican Institute, two-thirds of Hungarians do not support the Chinese university. The campus is also opposed by the mayor of Budapest, Gergely Karacsony, who announced earlier this week that he would name streets in the area after the victims of China's human rights violations. Among four new street signs include a free Hong Kong road, Dalai Lama Street, and Uyghur Martyrs Road after the mainly Muslim ethnic group that international governments say have been the victims of sustained human rights 
rights abuses and genocide in Xinjiang, China. Fudan University is one of China's most prestigious educational institutions. The campus in Budapest, which is expected to be finished by 2024, will be its first site in the European Union. The 31st Pure Arabian Horse Spring Youth Show, which takes place for two, weekday, two weekend days at the horse stables in Bialka near Krasnistav, turned out to be a real holiday for horse lovers. This location is an important breeding center for Arabian and Małopolskie horses and ranks among the top Polish horse studs. The show and the accompanying attractions were admired by our reporter Marcel Hulewicz. Due to pandemic limitations, Polish breeders of Arabian horses will not remember last year very well. However, the audience did not forget the beautiful and pricey horses from Polish breeders. Today, one could catch them at the horse stables in Białka near Krasnysław. The event was held for the first time in 1983. The studs compete according to their age, yearling, two-year and three-year-old horses. The fillies and stallions start separately. The most successful participant of these shows is the Mihawuf stud, which in recent years has received 35 distinctions. 28 awards have been given to horses exhibited by the horse stud in Janów Podlaski. Pure Arabian horses bred in Poland are considered to be the quintessence of horse beauty. Durable, undemanding to breed, and fast at canter, they are second to none over long distances. Arabians are intelligent, kind, sensitive, and attached to humans. These mounts have been bred in Poland since the 18th century. The guests of this year's competition could see a show of a much older art, horse archery. The rider not only rushes on the horse, but also hits the target. Such a sight can arouse much fear in many gentlemen. You have to work hard. You start by shooting from the ground. Then you take a horse that is trained not to be afraid of arrows and other unnatural sounds. And of course, you have to take care of your own condition. A friend inspired me with this sport. I decided to try it for a year. During my first competition in Turkey, I won my category. And then I won twice in Ukraine, and I liked it very much. Now, for example, I can travel all over the world to such competitions. Anja Sokulska is a representative of Poland in horse archery, a multiple record holder of Poland and the world, and the most recognizable competitor in this sport. That's all for this evening. Thanks, and have a wonderful week ahead.